The Dakar Rally isn't just a race. It is 5,000 miles of rock, soft sand, and absolute mechanical hell. It's like driving from LA to New York, entirely off-road, while being shaken inside a paint mixer at 100 miles per hour. You bring a normal car here, it disintegrates. The suspension snaps. The engine chokes on dust. You bring a standard EV here, it dies in 20 minutes. The sand creates so much drag, it consumes energy 10 times faster than asphalt. So, when Audi announced they were building an electric vehicle to conquer this nightmare, everyone laughed. They said it was impossible. They said physics would kill them. But Audi didn't listen. Meet the Audi RS Q e-tron. It looks like a lunar rover, it sounds like a dying spaceship, and it is powered by the most complex engineering sorcery I have ever seen. This thing is officially an EV, but it carries its own power plant on its back. It has a gas engine, but the engine isn't connected to the wheels. It has three motors for cooling systems and four miles of wiring. It is a rolling science experiment. It costs millions. And honestly, it's a total cheat code. Let's rip it apart and see what makes it tick. To understand this beast, you have to forget everything you know about hybrids. This isn't your grandma's Toyota Prius. This is military-grade hardware. Here is the reality check to finish a single 500-mile stage of Dakar on pure electric power. You would need a battery that weighs 2 tons. That's heavier than a Ford F-150. That's impossible for racing. So Audi built a Frankenstein monster. They call it an energy converter. Pop the carbon fiber hood, and you won't find a normal engine. Sitting in the middle of the chassis is a 2.0-liter turbo four-cylinder ripped straight out of Audi's DTM race car. Mind-blowing fact number one, this is one of the most efficient gasoline engines ever made. A normal road car wastes 70% of its fuel as heat. This engine runs at over 40% thermal efficiency. That is Formula One level tech. But here is the twist. This is the part that breaks your brain, the driveshaft delete. There is no physical connection between the gas engine and the tires. None. Zero. You could cut the car in half, and the engine wouldn't know the difference. The engine acts purely as a massive generator. It screams at a constant 6,000 revolutions per minute, the absolute sweet spot for efficiency, and pumps electricity into the high-voltage battery. It doesn't idle. It doesn't rev up and down at traffic lights. It has two modes, off and max power. This isn't a Tesla battery. A Tesla battery is designed for long range. This battery is designed for violence. It's a high voltage, round cell battery that weighs about 800 pounds. It's not huge, only 52 kilowatt hours, which is smaller than a Chevy Bolt. But the speed at which it can dump power is insane. It acts like a buffer. When the driver floors it, the motors pull power from the battery and the gas generator simultaneously. And speaking of motors, Audi didn't mess around. They took the motor units from their Formula E single-seaters, one on the front axle, one on the rear, and a third one attached to the gas engine to act as the generator. These motors operate at 97% efficiency. Compare that to a combustion engine which is lucky to hit 35%. That means almost zero energy is wasted. You have a DTM racing hard charging a high voltage military battery, powering Formula E electric motors, all inside a Dakar buggy. Now, here is the problem that almost killed the project heat. Electronics hate heat, batteries hate heat, and the Dakar rally takes place in the desert where air temperatures hit 110 degrees. If the battery goes over a certain temperature, the car shuts down to prevent an explosion. So Audi had to build a plumbing nightmare. The RSQ e-tron has four separate cooling circuits. One for the AEC so the driver doesn't die. One for the motors. One for the gas engine. And a specialized, low-temp circuit filled with an exotic fluid just for the battery. The front of the car is basically one giant intake. It's inhaling air to keep this computer on wheels from melting down. So why go through all this trouble? Why not just use AV8 like everyone else? Two words, virtual quattro. In a normal 4x4, 
you have heavy mechanical differentials, transfer cases, and steel shafts. When you jump a dune and land, the shock travels through all that metal. Parts break, axles snap, plus, mechanical systems are slow. If you hit ice or soft sand, it takes a split second for the gears to react. In the RSQ e-tron, it's all software, baby. Since the front and rear axles aren't connected mechanically, the computer acts as a virtual center differential. It distributes torque between the front and rear in 30 milliseconds. That is faster than the blink of a human eye. Here is a specific example of the jump. When a normal truck jumps, the driver has to be careful with the throttle so the wheels don't spin too fast in the air or they'll blow the transmission when they land. The Audi? It has sensors that detect the suspension is fully extended. It instantly cuts torque to stop the wheels from spinning and then re-engages power the millisecond the tires touch the ground. It's not just driving, it's computing. It distributes torque so precisely that the car feels like it's glued to the ground, defying physics. Imagine being the driver, Carlos Sainz or Stefan Peter Hansel, legends of the sport. They climb into this cockpit, and what do they see? Screens, everywhere. But there is something missing. There is no gear stick. The RSQ e-tron has one gear, forward. That means zero to 100 on dirt, with zero interruptions. No shifting lag, no clutch kicks, just a seamless, relentless wave of torque that feels like being shot out of a rail gun. But there is a downside, the sound. Drivers have actually complained about this. In a normal car, the engine noise tells you how fast you are going. High revs means fast, low revs means slow. In the Audi, the gas generator drones at a constant 6,000 revolutions per minute regardless of speed. You could be doing 10 miles an hour or 100, and the sound is exactly the same. It messes with your brain. It's disorienting. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner fighting a jet turbine. So is this the future? Or is it an over-engineered science project? Audi proves something massive here. They prove that you don't need a drive shaft to win in the dirt. You don't need a massive V8. You just need enough code and enough voltage to power a small city. This technology, the thermal management, the energy recovery, the software, it's eventually going to trickle down to your road car. But right now, in the desert, it stands alone. It is the most complicated, expensive, and fascinating off-roader ever built. It's a spaceship in a sandbox. But I want to know what you guys think. Is this series hybrid setup genius? Or is it just too much tech that can break in the middle of nowhere? Let me know in the comments, Team Cyberpump or Team Old School V8. Don't forget to smash that like button if your brain hurts from all this engineering and subscribe to CarCore. We're uncovering the secrets they don't want you to know. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.